everyone so now we will do the video number 5 in that one we will continue this project design and implement a small company network already i hope you watched the four videos so now we can continue the remaining one so in the topology if you see already we done the configuration vlan we created and we assigned the ip now we need to do the some other configuration so what other configuration we need to do let's see here first of all we need to assign the ip address to the router and we need to do the routing protocol here so let's put here what ip we are going to use in between this router so they did not mention here if you see they did not told us to use that ip or this ip here just they give the vlan ip and they did not ask me to use this ip schema that ip schema in the uh, in between the router so we can use anything our wish so i will use 192.168 uh, 12.0 I am putting because this is router 1 this is router 2 in between I can use here this interface f0 by 0 192.168 one here will be 12.2 same like that here I can put 192.168.223 I will give 23 means this is a router 2 this is router 3 so 23.2 23.3 and here we will write 192.168.23 13 13.0 okay 13.0 here we will put this one and after that what we will do this site we need to configure here we are going to do the sub interface so this configuration we will do after some time what we need to do we need to divide this interface into sub interface and we need to configure the gateway for this machine so we need to do here because we are going to do the interval and routing there so if you want we can do here and we can put the gateway like whatever the ip schema we have like 192 168 10.1 20.1 30.1 that one we can use okay we can do that way also if you want we can do now only uh, or if you want we can use the next one means first we can do this one whatever we have here later we can look anyhow let's do let me take the r1 and start doing something then we will look what we can do first what we can do last so here i am inside the r1 i will do i will go enable config t i will write the host name i will put the r1 and then interface here interface f0 by 0 i am going to f0 by 0 this is the f0 by 0 in this one i am writing the ip address whatever ip schema we plan 192 168 12.1 255.255.255.0 and i will write here no shirt then we have another i interface this one is a f0 by 1 so i will write f1 by 0 f1 by 0 ip address i will write here 192.168.13 sorry 13.1 255.255.255.0 I will write here is no shirt okay so these two interface is done now we need to look this third interface that is the f0 by 1 here very carefully we need to do because here we need to do the sub interface so let's do that one also no issue I am thinking to do later but no issue now we can do so here I will write interface f0 by 1 this one and here we will write no shirt and no IP address after that we write interface f0-1 and dot i am dividing this into sub interface this one is no this method we are calling router on a stick so i am going to do the router on a stick we have how many vlan here if you see vlan 10 20 30 so i am going to do this one for vlan 10 20 30 so here i will you can here you can put any number but i am putting the vlan number so easy for us to track and in the future to do the troubleshooting also this is easy if i give the vlan number but if you want to give any other number also you can give but generally i am using best practice as a vlan number only so i will put here vlan 10 interface f0 by 1 this is a main interface dot 10 so it divide the sub interface after that we need to write encapsulation dot 1q and here you need to define the vlan number whatever this is uh, this interface you are doing for which vlan you need to put because they are going to do the tagging here so we need to be careful here so here i will put vlan 10 because i am doing for vlan 10 after that we need to assign the ip to this sub interface this is a sub interface f0 by 1 f uh, that is f0 
by 1 dot 10 so here whatever the gateway we plan we will give that one gateway we are planning 192 168 1.1 1 .1 we can say so i will write 192 168 1.1 1 .1, give a space 255.255.255.0 okay and i will write no shirt already this interface is up this uh, what we can say this one is done for the vlan uh, 10 now we need to do for vlan other vlan so i will write exit and then i will write interface f0 uh, slash 1 dot 20 for the vlan 20 and here also same thing we will do encapsulation dot 1q and vlan number we will put and after that we will assign the ip address 192.168.20. Okay, sorry, here we done 1.1, 1 .1, here should be 10.1 because for which VLAN we are doing, I am putting here. If you see here what they mention here, 10. Dot something. So by mistake, I done 1. Dot something, we will correct now. Let's complete this one, then we will correct. So 20.1, I am assigning IP 255.255.255.0. Okay, so let me go to this interface. Interface first, I will exit, I will write interface F0 by 1 dash F0 by 1 dash 10. And here I will correct the IP IP address 192.168.10.1255.255.255.0. Okay, I corrected. If you want to check, you can write show interface, do show interface. I because here I am writing do because I am inside the global configuration mode. If you are not in the global configuration mode, you can write show IP interface brief. But I am inside that one, so I wrote here. Uh, what I wrote here, I wrote here, sh do show IP interface brief and you can see this is the sub interface for VLAN 1, that is VLAN 10, this is for VLAN 20. Now we need to create for VLAN 30 also. Here is the VLAN 30, we need to use the 30. IP, whatever we are using, that should be 30. So I will write F0 by 1 dot 30. Okay, this one, this interface we are dividing again. Now I will write encapsulation dot 1Q and we need to give the VLAN tag after that ip address whatever ip schema we are planning to use here that is 30.1 give 255.255.255.0 and we will write here no shirt that's all any confusion no confusion right so with this one we done the inter vlan here what i done simple way here just i divide this one interface into sub interface so this will be the gateway we can say this should be the gateway to the all computers so whenever you are configuring the dhcp server you should use this 30.1 20.1 10.1 should be the gateway okay and if you want to enable the ospf like they are mentioning here you need to enable the ospf also here if you see use the ospf uh, as a routing protocol to advertise the routes so here OSPF we can do configuration in the R1 I am doing later we will do R2 R3 everywhere so how we will do we will write router OSPF 1 network and whatever network we are using we need to put example I am using 192.168.10.0 then uh, we need to write the wildcard mask this is a 0.0.0.255 is a wildcard mask after that area 0 I am using this one for vlan 10 now this is for vlan 20 after that this is for vlan 30 okay and also we have one more interface here this is 12 well and 13 so we need to do that one also we need to advertise that so here i will write 12.0 well and 13.0 sorry because you know already i hope because already we done lot of ospf labs that's why i'm writing directly here so this way we will advertise the our interface or our network in the ospf this one you have 13.0 this is 12.0 and here you have 3 10.0 20.0 30.0 so ospf is enabled here and if you want we can save the configuration and now we need to do the dscp configuration also but till here any confusion any doubts let me know this is very simple only after that we need to do the dscp configuration because if you see here what they are saying uh, ospf we need to do we need to do in all the router here and here everywhere but first let's finish everything of the r1 then we will go for the other one so and uh, what they are asking all the device in the network expected to obtain the ip address dynamically with their respective router configure as a dscp server so we need to configure the dscp server so they can get the ip address so here we need to configure the dscp server in this router so they are going they should get the ip address 
So how we can configure the DHCP server? If you see here, you can write IP DHCP. Uh, you can put here uh, pool and name. You can put the name here, any name you can put. IP DHCP pool. An example I will write for VLAN 10. Okay. And a press enter and I can write here network. Whatever the network you want to give, example 192.168.10. 255.255.255.255.0 okay this one we will put so I am saying IP DSCP pool VLAN 10 for VLAN 10 we need to give the IP here you can put any name I am putting the VLAN 10 so we easily track this pool we configure for which VLAN and here we need to write the default gate default router that should be the IP of the gateway so gateway we told 10.1 right so this is the gateway so this is a DSCP configuration here I wrote IP DSCP pool VLAN 10 and whatever the IP we want to give for that one we put here 192.168.10.0 and 255.255.255.0 and uh, here if you see this will be the gateway we done for VLAN 10 only we need to do for VLAN 20 30 so VLAN 10 let's see here still it is working or we need to do some more changes here they are getting IP yeah if you see they, they are getting the IP so this this is started and they are getting the IP from the VLAN 10 now we need to do same thing for VLAN 20 30 so we will do that one and here if you check it will not get the IP because here we did not configure for VLAN which VLAN here we have let me move VLAN 20 so still VLAN 20 we did not configure that's why we are getting the APIP IP so no issue we will do that configuration also and also you need to exclude also so you can write here like uh, IP DSCP exclude which IP you don't want to give because whatever IP you give as a gateway like this one should be the gateway of the machine so this IP we should not give to anyone so we need to exclude that IP so we will write IP DSCP IP DSCP exclude 192.168.10.1 so we exclude and same thing for VLAN 20 also we need to exclude 20.1 and we need to exclude for 30.1 also so I am writing here this 3 so this 3 IP we will not give because this 3 IP we are going to use as a gateway so if you see here just now what we where we get the IP you get the gateway as 192.168.10.1 okay so you get the 10.1 and you should not give the 10.1 10 you get as a gateway and you should not assign the 10.1 to any other computer that's why we are excluding that one and now you can do the same configuration for the other so how we will do we will write IP DSCP pool for VLAN 20 for VLAN 20 you can give any name here for VLAN 20 as I wrote here no need to give the space here here I am just I am putting this one so by seeing this one we can differentiate maybe if you will resign the company and you will leave another new engineer will come he will be struggling to check which pool is for what VLAN like that so better give the VLAN number so even if you are not there and the other guy can maintain and manage the network so give the appropriate name so it will be easy for everyone for you also maybe later you will forget so better you give the number like this so this is for VLAN uh, 20 after that write network and put here whatever the network ID you want to give like this 192 20.0 because we plan to use this 20.0 for the VLAN 20 and after that you will write default router and here should be the gateway whatever the gateway you are planning to use that will be the gateway here that's all and uh, now you can go here and check here it will get the IP before he is not getting now he will get the IP from the server you can see 192 20.2 they are getting and 255.255.255.0 and 192.168 20.1 so it is working perfectly okay and now you can do the same thing and if you want to define here like uh, some more parameter also you can define like DNS server if you want to define you can write this command also DNS server so you can get the DNS entry also here you are getting nothing so if you do now you will get that entry whatever we put 8.8.8 if you want the DNS also so if you need the DNS we can do the DNS for this VLAN this also so just I will copy if I want to add any configuration there now I am inside that one then I will write DNS server I will put 8.8.8 so I will get this entry if I go here and select this computer 
this one IP and if I go click static and dynamic you will get here the entry as 8.8.8 .8 also. This is a DNS server like whenever we are typing the domain name, uh, domain name is going to resolve to IP address with the help of DNS. So they will go to DNS and they will ask I want to go to abc.com what is the IP that one. So DNS server will give the IP of the abc.com. So we done the what we can say for VLAN 10, 20 we done now let's do the VLAN 30. So IP DSCP pool VLAN 30 and then after that network and give the network ID of the VLAN 30 whatever we plan and then write the subnet mask 255.255.0 and write default in defined router 192.168.30.1 okay that's all and save the config router save the configuration in the router and click here you will get and also we forget that DNS so if you want DNS you can write DNS server 8.8.8.8 and we will save the configuration here and go to this computer click here desktop and click here and click here you are getting the IP check you are getting yes you are getting now inter VLAN also also we done so now what you can do you can ping from this different department to this department and verify it is working or not already we know that different VLAN cannot communicate so now we need to make sure different VLAN we done the inter VLAN routing so different VLAN is working or not so if you see here IP is 10.2 so I need to ping from here uh, 10.2 so from this computer I am going to put the uh, ping the 10.2 so I will go here ping 192.168.10.2 let's see reply will come or not from here it will go here and it will come here 10.2 it is working different VLAN is working because in the project somewhere they told like all the devices in the network are expected to communicate with each other so now only we configure one switch that is a floor one switch in that one we have the three VLAN and we are checking one VLAN with another VLAN they are working so this condition is also satisfied okay this condition is also satisfied no need to worry it is working perfectly after that what we will do we will see we will do in our next class else the video become lengthy so in our next class what you need to do same thing what you done here you need to do in this uh, router in this router okay after that we need to look some more thing so save this configuration in all the devices and click this save we will meet you in the next video thank you 